Hello and welcome to Super Indians, a limited series we are trying out focusing on pop culture, highlighting indigenous artists. CSUN's American Indian Studies Program and American Indian Student Association recognizes and acknowledges the Sesevitam, the first people of this ancestral and unceded territory of Sesevenga that is now occupied by our institution. And it honors their elders, past and present, and the Sesevitam descendants who are citizens of the Fernandinho Tatavian Band of Mission Indians. AIS and ASA recognize the Sesevitam are still here and recognize our neighbors, the Shumash and Tongva. I am your host, Roman Saragossa, an alumnus of CSUN and proud member of CSUN's American Indian Student Association. I am currently in sunny Los Angeles uh, and not too far from my alma mater. And to, on today's episode, we have the amazing Stephen Graham Jones. Stephen, it is such an honor to meet you. Um, and I just want to first give you uh, the floor to let you introduce yourself. I'm Stephen Graham Jones. I, I'm in Boulder, Colorado right now. Um, I've written a lot of books. I've written a lot more books than I've published, actually. People always ask how many I've written, and I'm like, you don't want to know that, you know? <laughs> but, <laughs> but I've probably published between 25 and 30 books. Um, let's see, the the most recent two, one of them is Only Good Indians. Mm -hmm. The other one is My Heart is a Chainsaw. But also, I just did Memorial Ride, too, a graphic novel. Wow. And um, got more stuff coming out, always. I'm Blackfeet, born and raised in Texas. I think that's me, man. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Yeah, it's well, so nice to meet you. And thanks again for for um, you know coming and talking with us. It, it means a lot. And you know, I'm so excited for the to the viewers to hear this one because it's there's so much. There's you've done so much, and you know, just like doing my research about you as well. It's like it's extensive. It's incredible. Um, and and you know, just diving right in, I, I would love to hear about your early engagement with storytelling, like, you know, who or what influenced or inspired you to become a writer? You know, one of them, the probably the two main storytellers when I was growing up, which we didn't call them storytellers, we just called them liars, you know, was my, <laughs> uh, my great granddad, my, my mom's granddad. Mm -hmm. um, he was, you know, he, by the time, by the time I was around, he was just mostly sitting at the kitchen table, you know, but, um, <laughs> He would, if he could reel you in, he would tell you some stories and he would tell you the same stories over and over again. And it wasn't because he was slipping. I think it was, and it wasn't because he didn't have more stories. Mm -hmm. I think he would tell me the same stories over and over until I got it, you know, wow. until, until I like understood it a little bit. And, and the other, the other storyteller is my uncle who takes a lot after my great granddad. Mm -hmm. One of my uncles anyways, he's a, he, he, I would used to when I was homesick from school, I would go ride tractor with him. He, you know, he'd be plowing all day and I'd sit behind the track in the cab behind his seat because mm -hmm. I couldn't stay home by myself. I was too young. And, and he would just tell me stories for 12 hours straight, you know, just <laughs> making stuff up from he'd see a car and he'd tell me all about the people in that car, you know, and <laughs> it, I mean, he, he's, it's all just lies and lies, but it's so entertaining, you know? And yeah, so they're, they're probably the main two. That's like, amazing. Yeah. To have that imagination, like I feel like it's a skill that people are, I don't know, we're losing, you know, and yeah, yeah, I think I think we have content served to us and we forget that we can serve it as well, you know, mm -hmm. no, exactly. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's interesting to see, you know, the genres that you write, you know, through mm -hmm. science fiction to experimental fiction to horror and graphic novels. And, you know, can you speak to how your writing has morphed and, you know, grown or changed over the years? Yeah, you know, I started out um, wanting to be Thomas Minchin. I just wanted to write the most difficult novel I could that nobody could understand. And that's really not that hard to do, you know, <laughs> to write a novel that nobody gets and nobody wants to get either. Um, and so I feel like my whole career, what I've been doing, it, it's like it's like I'm at the bottom of a staircase and the reader is at the top. And so I take one step, one step the closer and closer and closer to like um, what they want to actually read, you know. And so that's what I feel like every one of my books has been. It's just... um me trying to do it better to do it right finally you know um and i've yeah you're right i've been all over the bookshelves i've done done crime science fiction fantasy horror like what people call literary just weird um mm -hmm. i have one novel about a drive through urinal you know i don't know what you call that novel <laughs> <laughs> that's that's amazing yeah i was i was listening to one of your interviews and you talked about how um like when you're younger, you, 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 you'll find an author that you love and then you read all their books and you're like annoyed because you, yeah. 
you know, you like you finish all their books. Um, um, and I think it's interesting, like with your, you know, with your career, like there's so many different genres. It's like you can go to that genre with that artist, or with that author, and then yeah. read more about that genre and then go to a different genre that that uh, that author has. I think that's yeah, it's really fascinating. And yeah. And, yeah. and um, yeah, I just have such respect for that because I, I, I feel like I'm I, um, writing wise, I, I want to experiment more in different mm-hmm. genres, too. So it's it's really cool. You know, I was I was on a panel back in 2002 with a guy, Joe Lansdale, mm-hmm. and Joe writes all across the bookshelves as well, everything he wants to write in every medium, too. And at the end, in the Q&A period, somebody asked him, they said, Joe, Joe, what genre do you write in? They want him to, like, say this or like horror science fiction yeah. or something. And he said, I write in the Joe R. Lansdale genre. Next, you know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's what I want to answer. You know, I write in the yeah. Steam. Stephen Graham Jones genre, you know? Exactly, because I feel like for so long, especially as, you know, like a native writer, I can't, I'm not going to speak for you, but, uh, you know, yeah. I can imagine you're put into boxes constantly. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's like, stop putting me into a box. Like, this is who I am. I write a lot of different genres, like, yeah. deal with it. <laughs> no, you're, you're totally right. Like my first two, three novels, I would go do book events or just talk to, talk to different crowds of people about the books. And they would always ask me stuff about... Um, like American Indian history or, you know, politics of identity. And, you know, they get like their tragedy eyes on and get their mm-hmm. voice all deep and sacred and asking <laughs> questions, you know, and so stupid. And, um, <laughs> and I, what I realized was they were using the, the books as like a lens to focus on a culture, you know? Mm-hmm. And so they're using the books, like not as a final place, but as an intermediary between what they want to, you know, the ethnography or whatever it is they want to do. Mm-hmm. And so I, I finally just said, screw y'all, I'm going to go do what I want to do. And so <laughs> I took off for the horror fields and I wrote about zombies and slashers and mm-hmm. vampires and werewolves for a lot of years. And I was kind of challenging all those people. I was like, yeah, find the native stuff in this, you know? Yeah. 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 To me, it is. To me, it is all still native, but um, totally. But, but um, yeah, I didn't. I never did like getting those questions. I really feel like when the market or the critical establishment puts a adjective in front of your name, that's just kind of like a handle they can pick you up and throw you away with, you know? Exactly. Exactly. And you know that actually goes into the next question I was going to ask mm-hmm. because, you know. I, I'm an actor and, and, and constantly, you know, I'm a mixed race and constantly people are like, you're a native actor. I'm like, whoa, okay. Well, you're, you're an Asian actor. You're like, whoa, okay. Let's just, I'm an actor. Okay. Um, but I'm curious to hear about your experience with being a writer in native spaces, or if you identify as a native writer, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm curious to hear about that experience as well. You know, I mean, I definitely identify as, as, as native as Blackfeet specifically always. Um, but I don't always let my, um, publishers put that on the outside of the book you know Mm -hmm. because I'm worried that um there's a certain kind of reader out there who like picks up a book and they flip it to the back to look at the author photo and then look for the tribal affiliation Mm -hmm. to see if it's authentic you know Mm -hmm. and I think that if 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 we all start doing that authenticity dance then um that that's the dance America wants us to be doing are you really Indian are you not Indian you know Mm -hmm. and and so the, the less we can play that game, I think the better off we'll be. And so I try not, I try not to play it. At the same time, though, like these last few books, they all get optioned for film. And in my books, I always, to me, everyone in it is Native, mm-hmm. or most of the protagonists, anyways, are, are Native. And But I don't always say it. I just assume it. Um, mm. I find that now that there's like, that my work is getting optioned more regularly, that I'm realizing casting directors might be coming through this and trying to assign faces to these names. And so I feel kind of like obligated to say this person is is native so that they get cast correctly, because it's going to be weird to me if they get cast and they're not native, you know? Mm -hmm. Of course. No, it's yeah, I completely I completely hear that. Actually, so interesting to hear about, you know, um, just real quick to talk about uh, Only Good Indians. Uh, One of my best friends uh, narrated it, uh, Sean Taylor Corbett. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. he did so good too. Oh man, he's amazing. Yeah, I've known him. He was like my mentor for years and now he's like one of my best friends, my brothers. So yeah, um, it's really cool. And he was raving about it. I can't wait to listen and, and read. So that's so cool. You know, I was, somebody linked me to a review of the audiobook of Only Good Indians. And of course they're just ecstatic over, over Sean's reading of it and performance of it. But the, then at the end, the negative is, but then at the end, the author comes on to read the acknowledgements and I did not want to hear his voice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, man. 
that's, 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 that's really just a sign of how good Sean did it, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> man, that's funny. You have a great voice. I don't know what they're talking about, man. Um, but also I wanted to talk today about, you know, your uh, writing for the Marvel's vo Marvel's voices and Indigenous Voices, Volume 1 in 2020 and the brand new story of Silver Fox and like, Oh man, I got to see that. I get to read that, which was really cool. Um, and I would love to hear about, you know, your experience with that. Like how did Silver Fox become your super Indian of choice? Choice. So yeah. Yeah. You know, Marvel got hold of me and they, I, th I think they got hold of me really early in the process. Um, and so I kind of have my pick of the field, you know, like any, any Marvel indigenous character I, I wanted, I could have, uh, I think. Um, they didn't say anybody was off limits at that point anyways. And so I was, you know, peeling through, do I want to do, you know, Shaman from Alpha Flight or who do I want to, you know, um, and, but then I realized, you know, Silver, Silver Fox, um, she's, she's not Blackfeet, but she could be Blackfoot, you know, and, um, and so I thought I could inhabit her space probably better than some of the other characters and, and Silver Fox has so many like blank spaces in her story that there's a lot to fill in, I feel like, like we don't know Silver Fox very well. So it was really fun to take her and this other character, Trigo, into mm -hmm. that fort and have them just killing people left and right. Oh, know? man. It's so <laughs> fun. It's so fun. Oh, man. I love that. Don't, don't we all love a little bit of that, right? <laughs> um, yeah. No, it's, 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 it's powerful. And it's also beautiful. The, the, you know, the people that um, I forget the, who illustrated and colored and penciled. It's yeah. um, gorgeous. Absolutely it really gorgeous. is. Yeah, Marvel, they, they have like a like they're really good at um getting talent and then making that talent produce a wonderful product you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. no for sure and I've, wow. I've read the next marvel voices too the um and it's really good as um, i'm really really excited for it yeah that's exciting i'm so excited that like marvel's doing that you know yeah. and and i'm excited for like the you know all the films that are going to come out and all that stuff like that's yeah. it's 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 a it's exciting and excited it's exciting that they're bringing you know people not only you know for the films like you have for so long they're like okay let's focus on the actors i'm like yeah that's great let's focus on the writers let's focus on yeah. people who are actually starting from day one and i think it's uh, yeah. so that's really cool it's really oh, cool man. and we're getting stuff on tv like rutherford falls and reservation dogs you know so and, good yeah, it's amazing like i think it, it must be so cool like you know i'm 49 years old it must be so cool to be 10 years old and see yes. your own face on tv you know like that's gonna be magic 100 percent. like uh, we actually had um carissa valencia on mm -hmm. Uh, you know, a couple weeks ago, and uh, the, the the podcast just aired last week, um, or this week, geez, what, what, what day, where is it? Um, and, you know, we're talking about Spirit Rangers, her new Netflix show that's going to come out, and I'm just so excited for my little cousins to see this, you know, yeah. and just like, yeah. it's just so cool, like, I'm thinking about all the children's shows that I saw as a kid, and yeah. like, I never yeah. saw any brown kids in there, like, it's, it's yeah. so exciting. Remember a long time ago there was Pow Wow the Indian Boy, but it was not really accurate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just just the title. You're like, okay, interesting. <laughs> we'll see how this goes. But it's really nice, Marvel, that um, now we've got native writers like inhabiting these native characters. You know, so mm -hmm. it feels like and in, in like when these characters were all mapped out, you know, 40 years ago, whenever, whenever it was, that a lot of them were just kind of like plucked right from the background of a John Wayne movie and set down in this comic book, you know, mm -hmm. they're just, um, they're, they're almost like the litter Indian in the commercial, you know, a, a lot of the time. And um, yeah, so it's, it's wonderful that it's like a big, it feels corrective actually. And I like that. You know? mm. 100%. I, I completely agree. And, and can you talk a little bit more about your experience with Marvel? Like how, like, how was that experience? Cause I know, you know, they're, <laughs> it's marvel right so i'm so curious yeah. it's not even marvel it's the mouse it's disney <laughs> yeah that's true yeah exactly here's marvel here's disney like yeah, <laughs> being yeah. the pu puppeteer so yeah exactly but um what was really wonderful was um the editor i was working with like i turned my script in and you know she had slight adjustments nothing big but then when the art came through and the lettering was happening that's when she really like got her fingers into it and she would um, like change some of the dialogue and some of the captions, but she would also change the placement of the dialogue balloons mm -hmm. such that the reader's eye could like more naturally flow like, like it needs to, you know? And, um, yeah, yeah. and it's stuff that I wouldn't have thought of, but it's stuff that she thinks of automatically, you know? And it gave the, 
finished product like a, a really good slickness i think mm. that's a, that's so cool yeah it's something that like you know i i don't have um you know uh, background in in graphic novels and stuff mm. like that and but it's those things that you don't realize that have such an impact when yeah. you're reading it's yeah. it's it's mind-blowing um yeah. and, I, and i'm so much respect and, and admiration for that um i also wanted to talk about uh, the project that you kickstarted uh, was a howl. Uh, I want to hear about like the, yeah, yeah. Can you talk about that, that, that comics collection? And Oh yeah. Um, I mean, I haven't read the rest of them yet and uh, I really, I haven't seen my finished artwork that way shots doing yet either, but, um, but the sample, the little bits of it I have seen are just amazing. And, um, and I got, to, I mean, I'll always write a werewolf story and people call me to write something i'm like yeah maybe maybe not but when they say werewolf i'm like yeah i'll do that (laughs) (laughs) um, but no i think it's gonna be a a killer little anthology of just wildly divergent and different from each other werewolf stories and that's how Mm -hmm. it should be they shouldn't be the same thing 12 times over or however many stories there are in there Mm -hmm. and um so yeah i just i just kicked up a script and turned it in and and I think all the editing, if there is editing, I don't know if there actually will be a lot of oversight in that sense is happening, you know, over there, not with me. And that's great with me. I totally trust them to do it. They're people that I really trust, you know? That's great. That's, that's so exciting. That's so cool. And, and to do a Kickstarter campaign on like, that's, that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, so how did you, how did you get involved in that? Like, how was that? Um, I know, I know Beth, Elizabeth LaPense. I've known her for, man, I don't know. It's like many years. I don't even know how many years, a lot of years though. So we're just always in touch. Sometimes we'll see each other at conferences or conventions. And um, let's see, I I read her, what is it? Is it Dear Woman? Dear Woman and other, Dear Woman of Vignette. I think that's what it's called. It's a comic book. Mm -hmm. I got that back in 2015, 2016, I guess when it came out. Mm -hmm. And um, she's always had her fingers in, I mean, stories, of course, but um, comic books and video games as well. And kind of like hybrid works that are like, um, I can't really explain them, but they're online and they, they do, they do, they do amazing things. Um, But so that's how I got in just that. I think that's how I got in. It's that I know her, but also I did a novel called Mongrels in 2016, which is werewolves. And I'm sure they know, they probably know about that novel. So they're like, mm-hmm. this dude, no, this dude is interested in werewolves, you know? No, for sure. Yeah. That's, that's so cool. Yeah. I feel like, like the higher up you go before you know it, it's like just the connections and yeah. just da, 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 da. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. And uh, so, so for this project, are you writing your own new character or is it revisiting a previous? No, it's totally new. It's a oh, new, cool. new little complete one and done story 10 pages nice yeah. oh man well i'm excited i'm excited to see um and uh, you know to dive more into you know your experience as a as a creator as a native creator can you talk about the challenges that you've had to face and you yeah. know in this experimental and fiction space the first challenge was probably what was this my third book or second book i was working with a new york publisher and somehow they figured out that my family's name is calf looking and and they're like whoa that is an exotic name to to their ears you know and they said that we're putting that on your cover you're gonna be stephen calf looking from now on and i was like wait wait i I didn't i didn't feel right doing that i felt like i was like selling my identity in order to push books you know and um, Mm -hmm. i thought it would be a lot better if i could just be a boring jones and sell (laughs) it might be good you know (laughs) So I never, I never did that. I mean, I'm not, I'm not terribly in love with Jones. Don't get me wrong. But um, every, like half every, every hotel I go to, I'm like one of, I'm one of thirty Joneses. <laughs> but um, but I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad I didn't go with Calf Looking because I think I would always wonder if people liked the work or just thought that name was neat to their American ears, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and also one difficulty I've had is um, marketing, I guess, because. You know the marketing engine is always looking for hooks like what is your hook that, that'll get people interested and and so when publicists and stuff um, are working with me the first hook they see is oh you're native you know we don't know any of you so that's the neat thing about you but um i always have to tell them that um um it's not that neat you know first of all i've been this way for my whole life yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um but I, I i just never like to be sold and packaged like that if i can help it you know um I mean, my, my dream is just that people read this stuff and like it or don't like it, you know, that's, mm-hmm. what, that's what I always want. Um, and another trick too, that I found, I didn't figure this out immediately. It took a while was that 
the critics, um, which is largely the teachers, the professors of, um, of Native American lit, um, have like a set of tools that they, they're their go-to tools that they use to analyze native texts. And that'll be like, let's compare this to the oral tradition. Let's line this up with history. Let's um, read this um, ethnographic work and see how it's expressed through this art. And that kind you know, all those, all the things that, that we see all the time, which is not bad. I'm not saying it's bad, but the result of that can be that they end up being kind of like gatekeepers such that if your book doesn't engage the oral tradition, you don't get through, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and so I've found that the trick is just to jump the gate completely. And, and I wasn't the first to do it by far. I think Rebecca Runhorse um, with Trail of Lightning did it best. She's like, screw all y'all. I'm going to write a fun monster killer story, you know? And, mm -hmm. and it is, it's a really great story. She wrote it really well. She is a good writer, but she just went directly to the market. I mean, she was with the publisher, but she didn't wait for their critics to give it their stamp of approval. You know, she just, mm. she just jumped in with both feet and didn't need permission. And that's really the trick that I found is just don't wait for people to say, go ahead and do it. Just, just go ahead and do it yourself and, and mm. let them accept or reject it. I love that. I love that for advice. And, and, you know, I think that's something to really hold on to because I think it's, you know, I don't know, for me, like whenever, you know, I was growing up of constantly put into boxes, you're like, you have to make art that's like this, you have to make art that's like this, because people like you make art like this, and you'll be able to sell da 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 da, you're like, No, just, just do your thing, you know, and I think that's, that's so important. So yeah. that's, yeah, I, I, I hear you. Thank you for for talking about that because i think it's it's easy to also talk about all this you know the good and uh mm -hmm. but it's, it's fun to talk about the challenges i think that's how we all learn too so yeah yeah, yeah. um and uh yeah i had another question about um how, how do you feel your work has influenced or impacted others you know thinking about how how do you think your audience you know um takes your work um sometimes i feel guilty because in my writing, I often use the word "yeah." Like, um, are we going? Are we going over there? Yeah. Like, I just tag it on the sentences. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the time. It's just the way I talk, I, I guess, or the way I, the way I've always talked and been talked to. Mm -hmm. And I feel bad that other people might start doing that. I hear, I see other people doing those "yeahs," and I'm like, oh no, that's just me. I mean, it's not that I want it for myself. It's that I think it's a bad thing, and they shouldn't be doing it too. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. I don't, I mean, my, my influence, I have, I have really no idea. Um, hopefully, hopefully the stuff scares them or makes them laugh and they then try to scare somebody else or make somebody else laugh. That's probably the best I can hope for. You know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you know, just reading Silver Fox, I feel like it gives me like a, like, like some strength and like agency, like it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's powerful, you know, and it's scary, but it's, there's got this power behind it and it's uh yeah i that's it's it's so cool um and 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 so that's how it, you you feel that that listeners take it what, what what would you want listeners to be able to take away from your work i think hope is the best thing i can give a reader most of my stories tend to be struggles against some big adversity i think that's really just what stories are probably a struggles mm -hmm. against adversity and it's always like a power imbalance. The, the underdog who is the protagonist, the hero, is pushing against some massive force that they can't really beat. But then at the end, they have gotten to where they want to go, you know? And, uh, and that, that's what I want people to see in themselves, you know? That, yeah, yeah, the problems in my life are insurmountable. But if I just keep at it and don't let it wear me down, maybe I can make it to the end, you know, end of this day, end of this month, end of this job, whatever it is, you know, so that, that's what I think if I could give anybody that it's anything, it's just hope. Whew. I was just getting emotional there. I feel like <laughs> I was because I'm, 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 I'm starting to write more, you know, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not great, but I'm, I'm trying to learn and, you know, develop. And I think that's, I think that's such a really great um, advice to give you know, anyone, but especially storytellers of like, when you're writing something, focus on that hope, like that is what's driving your characters, your protagonist to get mm -hmm. past that obstacle. And um, 
I know sometimes when I'm writing that I, I, I forget that because I'm so focused on the scene, I'm focused on the yeah. da, 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 versus like what's that, the intention of, of hope and, and getting through that. So that's, I love that. So thank you. Um, and um, just a couple more questions. Uh, so what advice would you give today to your young, creative, aspirant self? Yeah, I think. You know, you can find online, I did a letter to a just starting out Indian writer and also to myself, um, but I can't remember any of those, of course. Um, <laughs> let's see, I would probably, if I could talk to myself at the very front of my career, mm -hmm. I would say, don't be so um, insecure. And um, what, I, what I mean by that is, and I see this in a lot of writers, but I see it most in myself, of course, is it seems like for my first two or three books, I really, really wanted to impress upon the reader or the audience that I was smart. And so I was like doing everything I could to like show off what I thought was my big brain, you know, like I can think of this and I can also think of this and I can think of this thing that you could never think of, you know? And, <laughs> and, and I, it, I was almost making it into like a Jeopardy game or something, you know, like, um, like, and you know, stories aren't battles of wits. They're not like me against the reader. They're me and the reader working together to um, like co-create some sort of story, a feeling, an emotion, a thought, and that. So that's what I tell myself is, don't be con don't be con so concerned with coming off smart. It's okay to be stupid, you know. <laughs> I love that. I love that. That's a, it's a, that's huge. I love that. I feel like I fall into that all the time too. And I love what you say about you know it's it's the reader and the writer coming together. You know, it's not just one person telling a story. You know, yeah. it's, it's two people listening. You know, I think about that yeah. when, like, think about my grandma and like, when she's talking to me, like, if I'm not paying attention, then there's nothing there, right? It's about the connection. I think that's so important. So, yeah. 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 And last question, because I know, well, actually I don't, but I'm guessing because of the genres you do write, you must be a Halloween fan. Oh man, yeah. You mean oh. the well, both the season and the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, did you dress up this year for Halloween? I did the night before. I was okay. it in Connecticut, and I, you know, I got all Jasoned up with makeup and a hockey, like this hockey mask actually here. I had this, oh, nice. This nice. Because I, I had to try. I was traveling, so I couldn't carry very much. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I usually do dress up for Halloween. Mm -hmm. This year, however, I was, I don't know if you heard, but on Sunday on Halloween, American canceled like 7,000 flights or something. And I was one of those yeah. flights that got canceled. So oh, I, I was in Connecticut coming home to Denver, which isn't that far, but I had to go down through what Charlotte and Atlanta. I had to go on different carriers. And yeah. so it was like an all day ordeal. I started at three in the morning and ended at 11 at night. <laughs> so I didn't get to oh, dress up at all. Jeez, that's <laughs> insane. I know, man. Oh and my God. You know, when you're in an airport, you have to wear a mask, of course. And yeah. so, like, I, that, that's like nearly a whole day with that mask pulling on my ear. <laughs> man. <laughs> oh, man. That's rough. I know. Whenever I have to, like, have a mask on for the whole day. Yeah. Oh, man, it's rough. And then, yeah. and then at the end of the day, you're like, oh, yeah, this is what healthcare workers got to go through every day. This is crazy. <laughs> like, this is nuts. Yeah. 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 I can't imagine. That's, that's rough, though. That's, I'm sorry that happened, man. That's, oh. I made it home, so I shouldn't complain, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> true, true. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much uh, mm -hmm. for talking today. It means just the world to us. So, um, well, thank, yeah. man, thank, thanks for the questions. This has been a fun talk. Oh, I'm so glad. All right. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for listening in, and uh, we'll see you next week. All right. Bye.